we've seen that we can apply this determinant formula where it is so-called expanded along the first row because my aijs always were a one j and that was my expansion along the first row this general process that we're doing it actually works expanding along any row i didn't have to put a one in there and it also works expanding along any column so i'm going to do precisely what we've done before but this time i'm going to do the determinant not expanding along the first row but expanding along the second column. If we wanted to, we could write out our whole big formula where we're leaving the first components, the i's unspecified, but the second component, the j's, are always fixed at being equal to two. But I don't think we need to do that. By the way, since you can expand along any row or any column, it's usually helpful to expand along a row or column that has a lot of zeros. It turns out for this particular matrix, we've got a couple rows or columns that have some zeros in them, and expanding along the second column is one of the ones that has a zero, so it's kind of nice. Okay, so what am I going to do? I am going to be going down this main column, so that's what I'm going to be going down. And my first part is right there in the A12 location, I have a big fat zero, so I start that off, I don't even worry about my minus ones, I don't even worry about my determinants, because they're all going to be multiplied by zero. Next up. I'm going to be looking here at this one right there. That's my next step if I'm going down this particular column. All right, so that's going to give me a value of one. It's going to have a minus one to the two plus two, which is four. So it's again, not gonna have a minus one. So it's just gonna be times one. I won't put anything in. And now I want to worry about the determinant, but we have to be a little bit careful here because A22 is the matrix that gets rid of those two rows and columns. And so that leaves me with one, two, three, four. Those are going to be my entries of the remaining matrix. And so what I'm going to do when I take their determinants, I'm going to get one times one along the main diagonal, subtract off two times one along the off diagonal. So what I think I said, one times one along the main diagonal, subtract off two times one on the off diagonal, I get this value of one minus two. Next up, I'm looking down here. This is the bottom one going down that second column. So that picks me up a minus one. As for my negative sign, so this is negative one to the power of three plus two, because it's the third row, second column. So minus one to the five. So I get another minus one right here. And then I'm going to be going, eliminating that row, eliminating that column, and that gives me this remaining matrix. And so its main diagonal minus its off diagonal is 3 minus 2 times 0, which is just going to be 0. So I'm just left with the value of 3. And so what do we get? It looks like a minus 1 in the first scenario, uh, plus a 3, and so I get 2. Which is the same value, of course, that we had computed the other way around. And this always happens. You can expand along any row or any column using this kind of process, and you'll be able to get the same value, a determinant, and that determinant tells you whether your matrix is invertible, depending on whether the determinant is non-zero or equal to zero.